Hey guys, it's Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make my Volume 1 Afghan Square. I have designed the square as part of the 2023 Stash Busting Crochet Long hosted by the Unraveled Mitten. Every other week, a free crochet pattern for a 12 inch size Afghan Square will be released. And at the end, there's going to be 20 unique, one-of-a-kind squares that you will then sew together to make an afghan. I have done block number three, so there's quite a bit left to go. And for mine, I decided that I would work with my volume one series. Now this series here, it comes from my ebooks. For my ebooks, I followed a trend of six patterns, and all of the volume ones were worked in the stitch patterns that you see here. So, for example, in my uh, Let's Crochet Some Scarves, I have six scarves, all worked one in each of these stitch patterns. After I worked a couple ebooks, I decided that I wanted to combine all of those stitch patterns into one project, and I've labeled that series my Volume 1 series. You can find some other projects that I have linked in the description box below. Each one of these stitches has an official name. I have renamed them on my blog to go with the different series that they belong to. So, first section is half double crochet stitches. This is my Haley series, so that is the Haley section. Next section is a combination of single crochets and treble crochets to create these little puff stitches. I believe this stitch pattern is called the berry stitch. It's worked a little bit differently, but it produces the same exact fabric. And I like to do it this way because it actually secures those bobbles down. But this series on my blog is the little pebble stitch. Then we have the classic granny stitch section here. This is my Grace Tinley section. Up here is going to be a combination of half double crochets worked with front post double crochets. This is my Octavia section. Bobble stitches in the next section are going to be my bobblish section. And then this is the actual name up here of this stitch. This is called the Suzette Stitch. This is the Suzette series on my blog. So in these two videos, I'm going to take you through all the stitch patterns of this square. And then we're going to go over the border, which is just a simple two round single crochet border. Then we'll weave in our ends and we'll be done. And you can then set this aside and continue making the rest of the squares by following the schedule and getting all the details from the Unraveled Mitten. But there are also a lot of other things you can do with the square if you don't want to do an afghan. It is a 12 inch square. You can make a back piece, stitch it together, and you will have a throw pillow. You could also make a back piece, stitch it on three sides only, and add a strap, and you would have a tote bag. You can use this as the back or the front of a sweater and just build onto it with sleeves and maybe a different stitch pattern or just expand the stitch patterns. You can make a couple of these, three or four, sew them horizontally here so that there's like three or four laid out horizontally you could use it as a wrap if you change up the yarn make it in super chunky blanket yarn it would make a really nice little accent rug there are just so many things that you could do with this square pattern by itself you don't have to make an afghan but it would make a really lovely afghan either with the rest of the 12 inch squares so that it's sampler style or make a bunch of these and sew them together. If you'd like to see any particular project worked with this square pattern, go ahead and drop me a line below and let me know. Let me know if you want to see a tote bag made with it or throw pillow or rug or whatever. Let me know and I will work on it for you. I still have many ends to weave in on my projects so that's why you see them there. 
I've made three versions of this square and I'd like to talk to you about that a little bit. So for this square you're going to need worsted weight yarn, this is Red Heart Super Saver, and you'll also need an H8 5mm crochet hook. Now gauge is really important for this project if you're doing the crochet along and you need all the squares to be the same size. You're going to want to take gauge which is measured at the end of the first section. So when we get to the end of the first section, I'm going to pull out my tape measure and I'm going to show you how to take gauge. Depending on how that goes, if you're spot on, you're good. If you're measuring larger or smaller, you're going to need to switch crochet hooks. But in general, we're going to start with an H8 5mm crochet hook to go with this Red Heart Super Saver yarn. Or whatever worsted weight yarn is your favorite to work blankets in. I started first with this Erin colorway. This is my comfort zone right here. One solid color. Plus, I think that when you work in a solid color, it really helps the texture be the star. Sometimes the colors take away from that a little bit. So from here, it's just one solid color. You can see all the textures really well, and I just really love it. But I wanted to try something a little bit different, so I am revamping my booth at America's Antique Mall in Melbourne, Florida. If you're visiting, just ask them up front for seller ELK and they will point you in the right direction. But I kind of want to go into like a Hawaii meets Florida vibe, a fun tropical kind of retro vibe. So the first thing I started with was this tropical version. And this one uses the color shocking pink, bright yellow, tea leaf pumpkin, turqua, spring green, and white. I struggled quite a bit with this one to get the last color. I really didn't want a rainbow vibe. I wanted a tropical vibe. So I tried purple, and then I tried white, and then I tried um, this color right here, which is a light brown called buff. And I just couldn't get it so I reached out to one of my friends and she suggested a bright green and I was a little like concerned at first because I didn't want to really repeat the color but it was perfect so that's what I did for this tropical one here and I really like how it came out so then I wanted to do a sort of retro one and I went with this one right here and I made this one after I finished the tutorial so you're going to see me working this tropical version and struggling and switching my colors at the end. But it was 100% worth it because if I would have just gone with the brown color that I ended up finishing the tutorial with, I wouldn't have been happy with the square. Now I'm super happy with it. For this sort of retro vibe, I went with spring green. This color I believe is called pool. We have carrot, cherry red, I believe this mustard color is gold. Then we finish with bright yellow and buff is the border which is a light brown. And I'm really happy with how this one came out too. I don't know yet what I'm going to be turning my squares into. I got a bunch of them that don't necessarily go together except this cream color could really go with anything. So I'm just going to be saving these for inspiration for now. I really like that I can see how the colors play together. But I think I'm going to use these color combinations a little bit more in future projects. Colors are something that I struggle with really hard. I never know which theme I want to go with or which colors I want to pick. And as you see later on in the video, I really struggled to finish it all off. But it is something that I am practicing and practicing is what makes you better. So I'm really glad that I didn't just stop with this cream color and that I pushed myself to try some colors out. You're gonna find the free crochet pattern for this linked in the description box below. I'll also link to the crochet along. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with a slip knot. So I've pulled the working yarn over my fingers here. Wrap it around my index finger so that it's two times around there. Hold the tension with my thumb and my middle finger. Pull the loop on the left up over the other one but not off my finger. Pull the loop on the left up 
over the other one and off my finger. Then take my crochet hook, insert it into the loop on my finger and pull it off. Hold the working yarn in my right hand and pull the short tail end with my left so that knot goes to normal tension. We're going to start with a chain of 40 to chain we yarn over and pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook. This is going to give us these v-shaped stitches here. We're going to continue, yarn over, pull through the loop on our hook until we have 40 chains. Each one of these v's counts as one stitch. Alright, 40 chains there. We are going to half double crochet into the third chain from the hook. We do not count the loop that's on our hook. There's one chain, two chains, three chains. In that third chain, we're going to yarn over, insert our hook right into the center of it, yarn over, pull through. That gives us three loops on our hook. Then we'll yarn over and pull through all three loops. That stitch we just worked is going to be the first half double crochet we're working. However, the two chains that we skipped here are going to count as our first half double crochet of the row. So technically right now we have two half double crochets. We're going to continue half double crocheting into each chain all the way across. Let's work a couple more together. Yarn over, insert your hook into the center of the next chain. Yarn over, pull through. Three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert our hook into the center of the next chain. Yarn over and pull through. Three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops. Continue half double crocheting into each chain all the way across the row. At the end of this row we're going to have 39 half double crochets and to count them you look to the top here where you see those v-shapes. Each one of those v-shapes is a stitch and then we'll count that skip chain as a stitch as well. And that's the end of row one. I'm going to hold the slip knot here and pull on the tail end to close up that hole. But there we are, 39 half double crochets. Rows two through four are going to be worked exactly the same as this next row. And they are also going to have 39 half double crochets each. To begin, we chain one and turn, 
half double crochet into the very first stitch so yarn over insert your hook into that stitch picking up both loops of the top V yarn over pull through three loops yarn over pull through all three and continue half double crocheting into each stitch all the way across the row once we get to the end of this row I'm going to show you how to work the very last stitch because that's going to be worked into the turning chain for this row instead of into the stitch as it will for the rows after this Alright, I've reached the end here. I have two stitches left to complete my row. So right now, if you were to count all the V-shaped stitches, there would be 37. 38 is going to be worked into the stitch as normal. And 39 is going to be worked into the top chain of the beginning chain that we skipped there when we started row 1. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook right into the center of that chain, and it's in the position of it's the most natural stitch to work into next. So just right into the center of that chain and then complete your half double crochet. And from now on you'll be working into um, regular stitches for the remaining two rows of this half double crochet pattern. So I'm not going to show the next two rows because they're worked exactly the same as this one that we just finished, but I will get you started. It is chain one, turn, half double crochet into the very first stitch, and then half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. Here at the bottom, there is one row the next row on top of that, the stitches look less defined. You're looking at the wrong side of the work. That is row two. What I've just started here is row three. And then we're going to have one more row after this of chain one turn, half double crochet into each stitch all the way across. There will be four rows in total. After I get that worked, I'll be back with you so that we can measure it. Alright, I've worked up to my very last stitch here on my fourth row. I'm going to switch to a new color for the next row, so I'm going to do that in my last stitch here. And uh, in the last yarn over of that stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook into the stitch as normal, yarn over, pull through. We have three loops on our hook. I'm going to pause here, grab my new color, which is going to be yellow. I'm going to make a loop here. I have a tail end long enough I can comfortably weave in. And I'm going to put this loop on my hook. By putting this loop on my hook, this counts as what would be one more yarn over. And then I'm going to pull through. That will complete my half double crochet in the pink color but put me in a position to now work with the yellow yarn. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my working yarn, chain one, and turn, and fasten off the pink. 
before I fasten it off, I wanted to talk about gauge. This is the point where you're going to measure to meet gauge. Four rows of half double crochet measured from the bottom to the top is going to equal one and seven eight inches tall and it's going to measure from the left side over to the right 11 and 1 8 inches wide. Gauge is essential here if you're making a project where the finish size is essential. I've designed the square as part of a crochet long where every month a designer releases a 12 inch square pattern so if you are making that blanket, then it's essential that you take your gauge so that this square equals the 12 inches that's going to match all the rest of your squares. If you're measuring smaller than this, then you're going to want to go up a crochet hook size and rework it. If you're measuring larger than this, then you're going to want to go down a crochet hook size and rework it. If gauge is not essential to you or if you're spot on then we're ready to continue. I'm going to go ahead and fasten off my pink now. And now in my yellow color I'm going to move on to row 5. For row 5 we already chained one and turned. We're going to single crochet into the first stitch there to single crochet, we insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. There are two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through both loops. And then I'm going to tighten up my yellow tail and my pink tail just to get those to look more even, uh, more clean. Our repeat for this row is going to be treble crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch treble crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, all the way across to the end of the row. We'll work a couple of these stitches together. So the next stitch is a treble crochet. We yarn over two times. That gives us three loops on our hook right now. Insert our hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull through. We now have four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then we'll single crochet into the next stitch, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. We have two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. In the next stitch, we treble crochet, yarn over two times, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. Four loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Single crochet into the next stitch. Insert your hook into that stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. I'm going to pull up a loop here so that we can flip it and see what the back side is looking like. Each time you single crochet after working a treble crochet, it's going to push that treble crochet forward and create what I refer to as a pebble. I like to call this pattern the Little Pebbles Stitch Pattern. That is the name I gave it, not its proper name. But the single crochet pops that treble crochet out so that those little bobbles or pebbles or whatever you want to call them stay there secured in place. As we continue to work along you're going to continue to build those here and this side that we're looking at where they're actually pointing out from this is going to be the right side of the square. This is going to be the side that's going to be facing up when we're finished with the square and to get these to pop out like this you have to work them from the wrong side which is going to be the back side. So when we finish our square what we're looking at right now as we work is going to be the bottom or the back of the square. Let's work one more set together. Treble crochet into the next stitch, yarn over two times, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, four loops on your hook, 
yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And then single crochet into the next stitch, and so your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both loops. Continue working that repeat all the way across the row. When you get to the end, you'll finish with a single crochet into that last stitch. And there's our last stitch for this row. Row 5 is complete. From the side that we're looking at, it sort of just looks like even stitching all the way across. But when you look from the other side, you see those little bobbles all the way across. For row 6, we're going to chain 1 and turn. And remember I said that in order to get these bobbles to come out on this side, we have to work it from the wrong side. So for this next row, we're just going to work single crochets all the way across. That way, after we get to the end, we can flip it and work another row of these little bobbles. So this row is just single crochet into the very first stitch, and then single crochet into each stitch all the way across to the end of the row. And when you work into the treble crochets here, you just, you have to rotate it a little bit so you can see that V-shaped stitch because it pushes to the back. And just insert into that stitch as you normally would. The single crochet is going to be much easier to see, but because the treble crochet is taller, you just got to rotate just a little bit so you can see that stitch. And just continue working across. And there we are, row 6 complete with single crochet into each stitch across the row. Now we're going to repeat that process again for rows 7 through 11. We're going to just repeat row 5 and row 6. So the next row, I'll get you started row 7, chain 1 and turn single crochet into the very first stitch of the row, treble crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch, continue repeating across the row, treble crochet into the next stitch, single crochet into the next stitch. And your little bobbles will match up with the ones that you previously worked, so if you ever look at it and they're off-centered, it could mean that you missed a stitch or maybe you added an extra stitch in there. It should still be 39 stitches across and the little bobbles should match up. Go ahead and continue working all the way across the row.
And now we've reached the end of row 7, ending with a single crochet into that very last stitch. For row 8, chain 1, turn, single crochet into the very first stitch, and each stitch all the way across the row. And I'm pulling up a loop here. You're going to continue working in this pattern. The first row we worked in yellow or in the second color. If you're working a second color, because you could just also work it in a solid color. This first row of the little pebble stitch is row 5. The single crochet is row 6. Another row of the pebble stitch here is row 7. And then another row of single crochet, that's row 8. You're going to continue until you have 11 rows in total. And that's going to end on a row of the single crochet, treble crochet. I'm going to work off camera and once I get close to the end, I'll come back on camera, we'll change to our new color, and then we'll begin the next section. I've reached my last stitch here. I'm going to insert into the last stitch, yarn over and pull through. Two loops on my hook and I'm going to pause for a moment. The color changes are done in the last yarn over of the stitch that you're working. So in this case, we have just one more yarn over. I'm going to grab my new color, make a loop. I have a tail end long enough to weave in. Put that loop on my hook. That counts as my last yarn over and pull it through to complete my single crochet. Then I'll drop the tail and I'm ready to get started with the green. The new section is going to be worked in the granny stitch pattern. On my blog, it is the series of Grace Tinley. I'm going to start with a chain two and then turn. Here, the chain two is going to count as one of our double crochets. We are then going to work two double crochets into that very first stitch and together it will equal three double crochets here. To double crochet, we yarn over, insert our hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, there are three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And that creates a cluster. I'm going to pull up a loop here so I don't lose that for a moment. Tighten down my tail ends and then I'm going to fasten off the yellow. I no longer need it. All right, let's continue with this granny stitch pattern. We're going to skip each of the next two stitches and in the very next stitch, which is a treble crochet, we're going to work three double crochets. Yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, pull through. Three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. That's one, two, three double crochets all worked into that same stitch. And that's the second cluster. I'm going to Continue working in that manner all the way across. Skip each of the next two stitches. In the next stitch, in this case it's a single crochet, three double crochets into that stitch. Skip each of the next two stitches. In the next stitch, three double crochets. In this case, it's a treble crochet again. It will continue to alternate as you go across. Continue in pattern, skip the next two stitches. In the next stitch, work three double crochets all the way across until you have two stitches left of the row.
I've worked all the way across here. I have two stitches left. I'm going to skip the next stitch and in the very last stitch I will work a double crochet, just one of them. And that's going to finish this row off with 40 double crochets. So we have added one stitch to our work. And now we're just going to continue for a couple more rows working the same sort of cluster just into the spaces now that are in between the clusters. For rows 13 through 15 we're going to work them all the same way. We're going to start with a chain 2 and then we'll turn and that chain 2 will count as our first double crochet. Then we'll work two double crochets into this space that's in between those two double crochets from the previous row. So yarn over, insert your hook right into that space itself. You'll have that stitch on your hook and then you'll complete your double crochet. Again, yarn over, insert your hook right into the space itself and then complete your double crochet. And that's the first cluster there. Then continue all the way down working three double crochets into each space. Not the stitch itself, the space underneath it that's in between the clusters. We'll continue all the way across the row at the end we are going to finish in a similar manner to how we finished the previous row. So once I finish my last cluster, then I'll show you where to place the last stitch. There's my last stitch from the very last cluster of the row. We're going to skip the next two double crochets from that last cluster there. And at the top of the beginning chain two, that's where we're going to work our very last double crochet. So there's the first chain down there and the second chain. Yarn over and so your hook into the center of that second chain on the top and then complete your double crochet. Rows 14 and 15 are going to be worked exactly like this, ending the exact same way. They're going to start with a chain 2, then you'll turn, work your first two double crochets into that first space there, then work three double crochets into each space all the way across. After working your last cluster in that last space, you'll skip the next two double crochets and work one double crochet into the top of that chain two. And each of these rows will also have 40 double crochets. I'm going to work off camera. And once I get closer to the end, then I'll come back on and we'll switch colors for the next section. All right, I've come to the end here of this granny stitch pattern. I have row 12, 13, 14, and 15. I'm going to work the first half of the last stitch, which is a double crochet. So I've yarned over, then insert my hook into the stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on my hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, and that leaves me with two loops. This is the last step of this stitch. So I'll put this down for a moment, grab my new color, which is going to be orange. I'm going to make a loop. I have a tail end long enough to weave in. Put this loop on my hook. That will count as the last yarn over and then I'll pull through to complete the double crochet. Then I can fasten off the green. I'm finished with it. 
And now I'm ready to start my next section. I'm going to start with a chain one and then I'll turn. For rows 16 through 20, we're going to work front post stitches and back post stitches as well as half double crochets. So for this next row here, row 16, we're going to work in front post double crochet stitches. And then when we switch to the other side, we'll work in back post double crochets to keep the raised stitches on one side. And you'll keep alternating this until you finish this section. I call this series on my blog the Octavia stitch pattern. We're going to start with a half double crochet into each of the first two stitches. So yarn over, insert your hook into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. The same stitch that we used here in the beginning section. Now we're going to work our first front post double crochet. Just pulling up a loop here real quick so I can show you. Normally we work into the top of the stitch here, picking up both loops of that V shape on the top. That's working into the stitch. For post stitches, we work around the posts, which is the part right underneath the stitch. And when you work double crochet, it's longer than if you were working like a single crochet or even a half double crochet. So when we work front post stitches, we're going to insert our hook in between the stitches wrap it around the back and come out in between the next two stitches and by doing that you'll end up with the post on your crochet hook and the post for each stitch is directly below it so here you see the next stitch Right underneath it is the post that goes with that stitch. So when we work our next stitch, which will be a front post double crochet, we're going to look to the next stitch here and go underneath it. And that's the post that we want to work around. So yarn over, insert your hook into the space in between the stitches to the right of that post, wrap it around the back, and come out the space to the left of the post. Then we'll complete our double crochet. Yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Yarn over, pull through two loops. And that's just going to raise that stitch above the surface of the other stitches here. Then we're going to half double crochet into each of the next four stitches, working into the stitches along the top there as normal. And now we're ready to work another front post double crochet. So here's the next stitch. Directly below that is the post that we want to work around. Yarn over, insert your hook into the space to the right of that post. In this case, it's an actual space from the cluster pattern, so it's easy to see. Wrap it around the back. Then come out the space to the left of that post stitch in between those two stitches there. Yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So it's a regular double crochet stitch, it's just worked around the post instead of into the stitch. And this is going to be our repeat for this row. It's going to be half double crochet into each of the next four stitches, and then front post double crochet around the next post. So we'll half double crochet into each of the next four stitches here as normal. And then the next stitch is a front post double crochet. 
we're going to yarn over. Here's the stitch, so we go directly below that. Insert our hook into the space in between the stitches to the right. Wrap it around the back and come out the space in between the stitches to the left. And in this case, it's another space between the clusters, so it's really easy to see. Then complete your double crochet. Then half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And now we'll front post double crochet around the next post. So yarn over, find the next stitch, go directly below that, insert your hook into the space to the right of that post in between the stitches, wrap it around the back, come out the space to the left of that post in between the stitches, and complete your double crochet. And we'll continue working that repeat all the way down the row until we have just two stitches left and then we'll finish off the row. All right, so we have two stitches left here. That is the middle cluster and the chain two. We're going to half double crochet into each of those two stitches. And now row 16 is finished. And these post stitches that we worked are going to be our foundation for the next few rows. We'll be working our post stitches from rows 17 through 20 around these current post stitches. So everything's going to line up. And if you want to count your stitches here, counting each of the V shapes across the top, you're going to have 40 stitches. For row 17, we're going to start with a chain one and turn. We're going to half double crochet into each of the first two half double crochets. And then our next stitch here is the post stitch that we worked previously. We're going to work a back post double crochet around the post stitch. So we're going to start by yarning over. Then we're going to wrap it around and swing down to the back of the work flip the fabric up so I can see the post stitch, insert into the space in between the stitches to the right of the stitch, wrap it around the stitch and come out the space to the left in between the stitches and when you do that you'll pick up the post stitch on your hook. Then we'll just complete our double crochet, yarn over, pull through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. From the right side you can see that the raised post stitches just continue on there. You almost can't even see the difference in the two rows. Then our repeat will begin for this row. It's going to be half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. The easiest way that I find to work it is to look for the post and then go directly above it to the left. It's a little bit harder to see because you do see that stitch right there. That stitch that looks like the next stitch is actually the stitch from the front post double crochet. So you want to work into the next stitch. Go down to that post of the half double crochet up to the left. That's where that stitch is half double crochet into that stitch and the next three stitches and then back post double crochet around the next post yarn over swoop down to the back side 
insert your hook into the space in between those stitches to the right of the post stitch come around the post stitch and then insert your hook into the space to the left of the post stitch the space in between those two stitches and you'll have just the post stitch on your hook yarn over pull through three loops yarn over pull through two loops yarn over pull through two loops then the repeat again half double crochet into each of the next four stitches back post double crochet around the next stitch yarn over swoop down to the back side insert into the space to the right of the post stitch wrap it around the stitch come out the space to the left of the post stitch picking up just the post stitch on your hook and complete your double crochet and then we continue working half double crochet into the next four stitches back post double crochet around the next stitch work all the way down the row here until you have just two stitches left Alright, I just worked my last back post double crochet. I have two stitches left and I'm going to half double crochet into each of those two stitches. And now row 17 is finished and the texture from the post stitches is on the other side which is the right side of our work just like when we did the little pebble stitch all those are on the other side as well. So from row 17 it just looks flat. But as soon as we chain one and turn, you're going to see the post stitches stacked on top of each other there. And now we're just going to continue repeating row 16 and row 17. The pattern is basically the same. Half double crochet into the first two stitches. And half double crochet into the last two stitches. And then in between, you're either going to work a front post double crochet and then half double crochet into the next four stitches, or you're going to work a back post double crochet and then half double crochet into the next four stitches. You just want to keep the texture, the raised posts, on the same side. So if you're looking at the wrong side that is flat, then you know you have to work back post double crochets. If you're looking at the side, that has the raised stitches here, the front side, then you're working front post double crochets. So let's get started with row 18, half double crochet into each of the first two stitches. Front post double crochet around the next stitch. Then the repeat, half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. front post double crochet around the next post stitch. Continue all the way across, half double crochet into each of the next four, front post double crochet around the next post.
There's my last front post double crochet of the row. I'm going to half double crochet into each of the last two stitches. And that's row 18. Row 19, chain one, turn, half double crochet into each of the first two stitches, back post, double crochet around the next stitch, and then the repeat, half double crochet into each of the next four stitches. And then back post double crochet around the next stitch. Continue across, half double crochet into each of the next four stitches, back post double crochet around the next stitch. At the end, you're going to work a half double crochet into each of those last two stitches. That will complete row 19. And then you'll chain one and turn and work one more row, row 20, and that will be with front post double crochets. Once I get to the end of row 20, I'll be back so we can switch colors and move on to the next section.